What's going on, everybody? It's Jeff here. Welcome back to the channel. All right, guys, we are two weeks into the new year, and we are already starting to get a better sense of direction on where the market is headed and how to navigate the next 12 to 24 months, especially that the Federal Reserve's number one goal has turned to combating inflation. So in this video, I'm going to talk about two separate ways where you can continue to invest and trade inside today's market. Both of these ways are how I am going to invest throughout this year because it is completely different than last year. One of the ways is a very active, as you know, I am very active inside the stock market. And if you are gonna continue to be active, it's the same thing I've been playing for the past few months. I'm gonna go over it in a little bit deeper of a fashion in case you are new to this channel. The other way is going to be a passive way. And that's if you have a full-time job, if you're just looking to continue to have your money inside the market and have your portfolio build true wealth for you, all right? You work hard for your money, your money should work hard for you, all right? So we're gonna go over those two ways. And the reason why I'm making this video is because recently I've had a lot of people reaching out to me, asking me about stocks, what my opinion is, and especially because some of the, a lot of them are beaten down, okay? And just because a stock is beaten down, it's down 30, 40, maybe even 50% from all time highs last year does not mean it is yet ready to be invested into, okay? Does not mean it has found bottom or it is a good deal. So I'm gonna break everything down for you. Let's get right into it. First off, all eyes are on interest rate hikes. All right, now I said in yesterday's video that Jamie Dimon had stated that there could be six or seven rate hikes this year. Now, personally, I think six or seven is a little bit stretched. If they're gonna start in March, that is one every single, you know, almost every single month by the end of the year. I think that is just gonna shock the market, shock the economy, and it doesn't give the, you know, the market any time to be able to adjust to each change. It's just one right after another, and it's rapid fire. He does state here that this whole notion that it's somehow going to be sweet and gentle and no one is ever going to be surprised he thinks is it it's a mistake okay so that being said i agree and i do think that there still is some more downside going forward now i want to share this with you as well okay this is a hennessy large cap financial fund portfolio manager he said that if damon's estimate is correct assuming that increases are a quarter of a basis point which is probably what they're going to be that means short term rates could be 2% by the end of the year now there's a very old notion that for every one point percentage interest rate hike, the market adjusts by 10%, all right? So if short-term rates go up 2%, that means we could see a 20% pullback, which 20% is would, just over 20% would put us into a bear market. Personally, I see us, we've already pulled back about 6%, especially in the tech sector. I do see us getting into that correction territory of 10 to 20%. I don't really see us getting to that 20 to 30%. Not this year yet, all right? The Federal Reserve, I know they have a big job to fighting inflation. I already think they're behind the curve of it. And I still think that they're going to try to do this slowly because they think that I believe the repercussions would be bigger, okay, if they did this dramatically. That being said, Let's get into the two ways how I'm going to continue to invest throughout this entire year. First off, okay, your high growth, your tech sector are going to be the two sectors that get hit the hardest, all right? Their valuations are based off of future revenue. Nothing is guaranteed. When you're looking at stocks that have an insanely high, you know, price to earnings ratio, those are the ones that are going to get hit the hardest. Okay, some there are some blue chips out there that have, have high price earning ratios. And I don't think those would get hit as hard as some of the, the low caps with insanely high, you know, price earning ratios. Okay, but naturally, those are the two sectors that get hit the hardest. Now you might be thinking, okay, what are the two that do well? Naturally, financials and energies do very well, okay, in times of interest rate hikes and in times of pullbacks. Okay, that being said, let's get into now the two ways we're gonna to continue to invest. So if you've been following the channel for quite some time, you know that naturally I've moved from a swing trader, from playing some of the moves into more of a quick, I don't wanna say a day trader, but yes, day trading, just playing the quicker moves. And it's really because that's what the market is giving me. 
All right, so every single day I put out a watch list, I do give this to everybody inside the group. All right, but I've been labeling out every single day on where I plan on getting into stocks, exiting stocks, what moves I'm looking for, and playing the move, okay? If the stock wants to move to the upside, we gotta play. If the stock wants to move to the downside, we gotta play. However, this is very active, okay? Meaning that this is not for somebody that does have to work you know, eight to 10 hours a day and they can't be at their computer. We'll talk about the passive way in just a moment. Now, if you are looking to get into more actively trading, because like I said, getting into stocks now and expecting a 10, 20, 30, 40% return, like we did in some of them, okay, in the early part of, of 20, or I'm sorry, the late part of 2020 and the early part of 2021, we're just not gonna find that right now. So before you do get involved with this, start to paper trade. There is no better time to learn than right now. All right, everybody seems to want to get involved in the stock market when it's already ripping and already at a high, but this is the time to get in before the move. All right, get in during consolidation, get in during a correction, learn, okay, be able to study charts, study stocks, see how things move, and then you're gonna be able to ride the entire upside, which naturally, like we, like we just talked about, stocks continue to move higher. Okay, so that's the active way. The second thing we're gonna talk about is dollar cost averaging, okay? And to explain this in a very simple manner, there's a reason why 401ks are successful. All right, you're not gonna find somebody that starts off at a job at 30 years old, over time slowly puts in 100,000 or 200,000, and by the time they retire, let's say 65, 35 years later, they don't have less than they put in. All right, it just doesn't happen. And that's because naturally stocks go up over time. Now they might dip and have a, a sharp dip like they did here in 2020. Might be a little slower like it was in 07, 08, and 09. Took a little bit of time to recover. But naturally stocks move higher, okay? So like I said, if you're looking to get in passively, if let's say, let's say you still have some gains from last year, or even you're, and you're down in some positions, there's nothing better that you can do right now than dollar cost averaging. When you're dollar cost averaging, okay, let me look at just to give you a definition. You can go look this up. It's from Investopedia. All right, it's an investment strategy in which an investor divides up the total amount to be invested across periodic purchases, all right? And you're doing this in order to reduce the impact of volatility. So what happens is you're not just buying the whole position. You know, you're not looking at, you know, let's say, you know, SoFi or, or Palantir, okay, or Neo, right, or ChargePoint. Okay, some stocks that did well that are, are really on, you know, uh, off of really far down from where they were at all time highs. And you'd say you got, you know, five grand, 10 grand, 20 grand, whatever it is, even 500 bucks. You're not just putting all of it in, you're, right? you're buying over time, right? Which means you're buying at today's price, you're buying at next week's price, next month's price, three months price. You're continuing to buy. You don't look at the red, you don't look at the green. All right, whether the stock goes down or the stock goes up in the short term, next 12 months, okay, you're gonna continue to buy throughout it. And what that does is it sets you up with a very good average throughout this entire time. Meaning if it continues to go lower, you're continuing to buy, buy, buy. All right, and a lot of people would say buy the dip. The problem when, when people, I see a lot of people buying the dip is they invest you know, a good portion of their allocated funds in a stock right now all right, and then in a couple of days when it dips or in a week when it dips, they only have a very small percentage to be able to buy that. And they cannot continuously do that throughout a periodic time. And that's why the power of dollar cost averaging is very successful. So this is something I'm going to continue to do because I do have some funds on the side to where I'm not gonna start raising my positions, okay, and going from trading you know, 30 or 50 contracts of, of, of an option to now I have more money to start trading, you know, 200, 300, 1,000 contracts just because I have that money. That's not something I want to do. I don't want to see that kind of volatility personally in my portfolio. And that's from an emotional standpoint. So what I am going to do is I'm going to continue to start buying stocks. Like I said, these value stocks, some financials, all right, some of your cyclicals, your Costco, your Walmart, your Home Depot, some energy, and also your high growth or um, a few high growth stocks, but also your tech stocks to be able to continue to buy through it. 
all right, where I don't have to wait for Apple to get to 100 or 120 or 140 because I don't know if it's going to go that low. But I'm going to continue to slowly buy it at 180. If it goes to 170, if it goes to 160, if it goes to 100, if it goes to 200, I'm going to continue to slowly buy it because I know the next 12 months are going to be choppy inside the market. However, when markets consolidate, just like stocks, and if you've been following my channel for a while, you know I talk about intraday moves. All right, when you see a rip up and you see that consolidation and we're not breaking support, when stocks and markets consolidate, you're just tightening a coil and it's tightening and it's tightening. And when it breaks out, it, that's when you're gonna be able to capture all of the gains. Now is not the time to just run. But now is also not the time to just take all of the money that you have and invest it 100% in stocks. All right, everybody talks about what to invest in, what to invest in. You know, they, they say it's, it's an old saying, and I know it, it, you know, it's, can be lame or whatever, but cash is a position. Okay, so this is how I plan on investing throughout 2022. And like I said, if you are interested in learning more, then please continue to watch the channel. I'm gonna continue to put out educational information. Join the Discord if you're interested. We've got a ton of people in there that are you know from all different skill levels, from beginners to people that are doing very, very well inside the market. And like I said, there's no better time to learn than now. So guys, that's it for this video. I'll see you in the next one.